Hey, you're listening to the right episode. If you wanted to hear the number one problem facing loan officers today, uh, I'm your host, Steve Kyles. You're listening to the Loan Officer Leadership Podcast, and we are powered by the Mortgage Marketing Animals. Carl White, what a great topic today. You and I were talking earlier, and it's like, what's the number one problem facing loan officers literally right now and probably forever in time? And, and so let's talk about that. Yeah, the uh, the you know one of one of my favorite questions is the old what one problem when solves solves fifty other problems. That's it's good. without question the the uh, the the call of uh, the call reluctance and the uh, the fear of rejection. So uh, so I, let's let's talk about both because I think one feeds into the other. I think the re- like nobody's afraid of the phone. Yeah, right. you don't so, like, phone and say, "Man, I'm, I'm I'm scared of that phone." Oh my God, there's a phone there. It's going to bite me. Like, nobody yeah. thinks that, yeah. and nobody's afraid of making phone. Like, hey, hey, like I'll tell people, "Hey, let me ask you this. I'm going to give you hundred dollar bills to give away, yeah. and you're going to call this list of people, and you're going to give them a hundred dollars. Zero people have car reluctance because they feel like they have. I'm bringing something really cool of value. That's right. And 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 you're not going to get rejected here. I'm going to give you a hundred dollars." no, don't give me a hundred dollars. Like you're not going to get that rejection. So when we eliminate that fear of rejection, then we don't have call reluctance. Yeah. And so I think one is, you know, it's, 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 I think they go hand in hand. So I think, um, I think, I think let's, let's talk about the first thing. I think the first thing that always come to mind on call reluctance and fear of rejection is, the, and I, I learned this from uh, Kevin Gillespie. And he said, Carl, you know, well, one thing I have found is people are not near as big and bad as I thought they were. Mm-hmm. Like I'm calling these people. I think they're all going to yell at me. They're all going to hang up on me. They're all going to tell me to pound sand. And I have found as a general rule that just doesn't seem to happen. And I, I'm not going to tell you it never happens, but like, so what if somebody does? Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're just, they're just not as big and bad as you thought they were. And like, you, you know, it kind of goes back to the worst case, best case scenario. So let's say I make a, I'm, I'm calling, let's say a real estate agent in our case. I'm calling a real estate agent. Steve, what's the, what's the worst case scenario I call this real estate agent? Give me the absolute most horrible thing possible. They cuss at you, holler, scream, and hang up. Worst case scenario. That's it. Right, worst case scenario. So now, if they do that, nobody that I know or that knows me or that knows you as you're listening today, yeah. nobody that you know would ever do that. So they're not yelling at you because they don't know you, right? So the worst case scenario is, in essence, you get a no, right? That's the worst thing that can happen. What's the best case scenario in this case? Have a great conversation and have you an actual relational referral to give you, to go after, to talk yeah. to. Yeah. So all the real estate agents that I've always worked with, that's how we, it was the phone is how we met, or it was a listing agent on a deal. And we, um, you know, I, I calling them and giving an update of what's going on in the file and then asking for the business from them. And so if, when I get that referral partner to start referring to me and they refer me, say a deal a month. And mm-hmm. let's just say we average, I don't know, $3,000 per closing, right? Just give or take, maybe more, maybe less, but you get the idea. If, if I get a, when I'm getting a closing a month off of those people, well, that's $36,000. So every yes, best case scenario is we're, well, I guess best case doing two or three deals a month, but let's just say just one deal a month. So best case scenario, I'm getting one deal a month, so that's $36,000. So the worst case scenario is a no. Best case scenario is $36,000. So what I do in my head, Steve, is I think, all right, what would I do? No, what am I going to do with that Mm $36,000? And I think, well, you know, Maria's been wanting to go uh, back to Paris, right? And $36,000 will give a big start to that happening, right? Mm -hmm. Right, That'll, that'll pay for the plane ticket and maybe the room. Uh, you know, if we don't go for too long, hell, that, that, I'd probably pay for the whole thing. Yeah. And so, so worst case scenario, I get a no. Best case scenario, 
I get 36 grand and Maria and I can take that trip to Paris. And when Maria goes to Paris, that's a good thing for Carl, right? That's a really good thing for Carl, right? It is. It's a good thing for Carl. And, uh, or maybe I'm going to uh, give it to my kids for their student loans. Uh, that mine don't have, you, you know what I mean, I, hypothetically, right? Or I'm going to get that new car. Or, you know, there's a family down the road uh, that their house burned down. I, I, I mean, it's just on my heart to go help them out. Or like in my case, this just happened. Uh, we're sponsoring 18 teams at the Palm Harbor Little League. So we have Little League. They oh, called yeah. me up the other day, say, Carl, man, we're, we're kind of short this. Uh, we, we, we need 18 sponsors. I said, done, got it done. Because okay. I know that all I need to do is get on the phone and get one yes. yes. And I can help 18 teams. Wow. Uh, and not that their little shirt has my logo on the back. That's not the reason why we do that. It's because then the kids can play Little League, which is really cool. And if I just simply make a phone call, I can make that happen. Right. So I can send the wife, I can send me and the wife to Paris. Uh, we can do the, we can do the little league. Uh, I can uh, help my kids out with the student loans if they have those. Uh, all those are really, really cool things that I'm simply willing to risk a no from somebody that doesn't even know me. That means mm -hmm. nothing to me. And they're not near as big and bad as I thought they were. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to make the yes meaningful that it's worth the risk of the no. So best case scenario is pretty darn cool. Worst case scenario, it's just not that bad. Yeah. Right. And, and I, think we, we, I think we just play it up so it's way worse in our head. You, you know what happens is I'm, I'm getting ready to call this realtor. And let's say it's realtor, I don't know, Bob. And um, so I'm, you know, it just, isn't I, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting ready to go and tell a longer story. I don't think I'm going to do that. Just pick up the phone. It's just not that bad. Hey, well, you know what you just said? And that's what I wrote down. Your why has to be bigger than the fear of rejection. And once yeah. you begin to realize what the yes is doing for you, that, that, that's what your freedom is. You know, whether it's the school or whatever, I mean, whatever your why is becomes so big where it's like, hey, I'll risk being rejected. And, and you know what I think happens? So the rejection is not that because they don't, they don't know you. Yeah, well, and they're right? not rejecting that, that, you. Because I always thought, I always thought, yeah. here, I'll, what I was going to say a minute ago, I always thought like when I call realtor Bob yeah, and he says no. He's rejecting Carl. <laughs> well, well, not just rejecting me, but for the rest of the week, he's going to be thinking about, boy, I shot him oh, down. Yeah. I yeah. really showed him. He's going to pick up the phone and call all the other realtors. And, uh, hey, I shot down Carl, and, man, I made him look stupid, and I made him look like a butt. And all this is play – he's going he's gonna to meet the Realtors Association say, hey, we're all gathered here today. Hey, before we get – let me just tell you what I did. I shot down Carl White. He had the nerve to call me up and tell me I was awesome, and, boy, I showed him. Yeah. That's what goes on in our head, yeah. which when we verbalize it, it's ludicrous. Of course that doesn't happen, right? Nobody's when, – when, when – when they get off the phone, they're not thinking about me. They, I'm not that important. I'm just yeah. not that important. Yeah. And so we just play it way worse. It's in our head. So, um, so I think just having a rational look of what's the truth about what's the best case and what's the worst case, and that I'm just not that important, that they're going to be thinking about me and broadcasting that to all their friends and family, and that I'm going to, they're going to publicly ridicule me for, for, for making that. It's, it's just, Great. It's like it's like it's like a child that there's a boogeyman hiding in the closet or under my bed. It's just it's, there's a monster under my bed. It's that same crazy, ludicrous, uh, childlike thoughts that go on, and and I and they go in my head, right? It, it, it's it's normal. So just know that it's normal to think those thoughts. It's just not true. Yeah. Hey, right? talk, talk about this. We talk about it in the boot camp where um, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the offer, just like a dessert at a diner. So talk, talk about that real quick, because I think when you're thinking about call reluctance and fear of rejection, Carl, so many times it's like, man, they're rejecting me. It's like it goes deep to your heart. And it's like, no, 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 no. They just are rejecting the offer for now, which is not always the case. Yeah. So the example I always give is, is uh, I don't know. Actually, it was a couple nights ago. A couple nights ago, we go over to the Lucky Deal. You've been to the Lucky Deal oh, with yeah, me. Yeah, 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 awesome yeah. place, right? Yeah. Awesome place. 
So it's a, a little restaurant here, not too far from my house. It's kind of like a classic New York deli in Florida, right? And uh, man, they make the best sandwiches ever. Like a Reuben sandwich there, it's world-class, right? So me, uh, a very dear friend of mine came and hung out with me this weekend, uh, Doug. I've known him since the 11th grade. So we're, we're having a great weekend. And uh, Maria's visiting some friends in Jacksonville. So Doug comes down, we're just hanging out. And we go to the Lucky Deal. We had a fantastic dinner, right? I had a salad that's just wonderful. He had this Reuben sandwich that looked like a New York skyscraper, right? It was like, holy cow. It was awesome, right? So when we finished, uh, they came over and they're known for their pie uh, uh, down there. Actually, their their New York cheesecake is what they're known for. And it's I've had it before. It's it's spectacular. It's really good. Hey, hey you guys, uh, leave your room with some pie. And actually, in this case, they give it to you. So when you buy your dinner, they give you dessert. Really? So, hey, you, 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 want, you want the pie? Uh, no, thank you. Because... Number one, I'm not eating pies these days, right? Because it slows me up on the bicycle. And number two, Doug just ate a sandwich the size of New York. He's full, right? As I am, right? We're both full. And so love the restaurant, love, the, love their uh, cheesecake. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, the waiter, I've never seen him before, but nice guy, right? Seemed like a nice guy, very attentive to us, seemed pleasant enough. And so when I told him no, I didn't say I hate you. I hate this restaurant. The meal sucked. I'm sure the dessert will too. Don't bring that to me. No, the meal was awesome. This is my favorite place. Uh, you seem certainly really super nice person. You're giving me the pie, but I'm still telling you no. I'm not saying no to you. I'm saying no to the pie. Mm -hmm. So when the agents are, when they say no to you, they're not saying no to you. They're saying no to your offer. It has nothing to do with you. Or, or maybe, maybe in that instance, they're already working with Steve Kyles is a loan officer and Steve takes care of his agents, right? You close them on time. You give them great communication. You follow up on the, their leaves like green on a pickle. I, I'm not going to get that one, right? On, on that day. But look, my referral partners, they last about two and a half years. Some have been 15 years. And frankly, some have been two and a half days uh, sometimes, you know, it, that's how, hey, this is the way it works. But on average, about two and a half years, which means that of the cycle of like 40 or so agents that are referring over to us and over in my branch, or, or probably a hundred, I guess, at this point, you know, every two and a half years, they get cycled in and out, which means somebody else is working with all the agents I was working with three years ago. Somebody else is working with them today. Not all of them, but a, a good portion, right? Sure. It's just the way that it works. And so, yeah, the no, they're not rejecting you. They're just saying no to your offer. And they're just saying no to your offer today. So mm -hmm. if I totally screwed up my last three deals and I'm like, man, dude, I love you, Carl, but dude, I, I don't know what's happening. Something going wrong. That's actually a bad example. That would never happen. But just say, hypothetically, I'm going to lose those and somebody else is going to gain them. And who, who's going to gain them? The person that's calling or the person that's in front of them. That's right. It's like, it's like when, when, you're, when you're back in our single days when we were dating or, or our wives were dating or whatever, you know, that uh, they didn't marry the first person they went out with. Neither did you or I. Uh, and, 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 you know, the, 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 the ladies that I dated before I met Maria were dating somebody else. And then I dated them and they left, you know, and, and, the, and vice versa. That might, that's a bad example. I'm, I'm, I'm going down a rabbit hole. My <laughs> wife is I'm trying to be very respectful to the lovely Mrs. White, but you get the idea is that just pick up the phone and make it happen. And, and I think you just have to want the desired result enough to make it happen. That's like when I go on my bike ride in the morning, some mornings I don't feel like it. Right. Mm -hmm. But I do it anyway because I want the result of 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 riding that thing. Right. I I I feel better when I started riding it. I fit in clothes that I haven't been able to uh wear in some years. And it, 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 it so I want the results more than I don't want the effort of getting the results. And you just have to want it. And and you know what? If you don't want it bad enough, I, I and I'm not saying this snarky, it's okay. Go do something else. Right. Find something that you do want bad enough. Like my 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 friend Doug that came down. He sells commercial trucks. So like if you're a plumber or electrician and you want to buy a truck that's all fitted out with all the plumbing and electrician stuff, that's what he has a passion for. So he doesn't do mortgages because he has a passion for selling trucks. I don't sell trucks. I have a passion for selling mortgages. Like whatever. I got a very dear friend of mine that's a, a hairdresser, right? They own a, a, it's a husband and wife. They own a, a, beauty, a, a hairdressing salon. And, and boy, when I talk to them, they got a passion. They, they freaking love what they do. Go do yeah. that. Like, like yeah. there's no right or wrong on what you do, but just have a passion for whatever you're doing 
And, uh, and when you do good work, asking for business to people to come to your hairdresser, to come by your truck, to, 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 to get a loan at your mortgage company, to refer to your mortgage company comes easy. Cause I, I have a passion for this. Like in your case, you weren't one, one of the best branches in, in the nation. Right. And so you have no qualms about asking for business, you know, to, to, uh, you know, to, to, to do, you know, get loans to your mortgage company, you know, because it's, it's an outstanding mortgage shop and, and, you know, you know, you have great key lime pie and not everybody's going to eat your key lime pie though, but you're not bashful about making the offer because, you know, your pie at your mortgage company is freaking spot on. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think it, it really comes out. You just have to want it. And if you don't want it, that's okay. Find yeah. something that you do want. Hey, and you know what, though, Carl, what I, what I think is so interesting, we, we look at call reluctance like it's isolated. You could call it workout reluctance. You could call it riding your bike mm. reluctance. You could mm. call it getting out of bed reluctance. My kids, it's their first week back in school, and they're like, Dad, I don't want to go to school. And yesterday I'm telling him, I said, hey, bud, when you do things you don't want to do, you've got to lean into what's going to make you better and what's going to get you where you want to mm. go. And we think of reluctance like it's a one-time, hey, if I do this, I'll never feel this way with the phones. The phone is a part of what makes us wealthy. And listen, you may, you, you'll you have reluctance with anything in your life. What we've got to do is learn. It's kind of like I'm teaching Ethan and Lucas and Ellie is we do the right things regardless of how we feel, because when you do the right things, the feelings will follow. You and I talked about it this last week. Feelings rarely start but they typically come once you do the right activity. And so, hey, and I was thinking about this too, you know, activity over time, the right activity over time will give you results. And it's those results that begin to give you the confidence. And once you start gaining the confidence, then reluctance goes further and further away because you know, if I do this, I get this. If I do this, I get this. We're, we talked about it a few weeks ago on the podcast about a predictable residual income. You want predictable residual income, learn to lean in to the phones. And, and you don't have to make cold calls your entire career. The main goal is to build your focus 40 mm -hmm. agents where you're doing life with people you know, love and trust, know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, the call becomes intoxicating. The phones become exciting because you're calling people and you're moving business forward. And it's something you look forward to, just like the riding the bike. But it, in the beginning, it is. It's a muscle you got to work. You got to push past the feeling. And really, we're seeing it for 90, 120, you know, anywhere from three to four months. As you start leaning in, just like working out, you'll see results. And that's what gets you excited and gets you past the fear. Hey, but Carl, you know, literally last week, uh, I was off and I got back in the office this week and was making calls. My first few calls, I'm like, Whew, all right, I don't want to do it. I got some reluctance here. And the more you lean into it, the more you do it. It's like riding a bike. It's like, okay, this feels good. Let's get back in the driver's seat. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, I, I think a lot of it also is knowing what to say, just as, as an FYI, I think knowing your script, cause like, like if, if, if I was to say to somebody that has say Mike shyness, I say, Hey, all I want you to do is go up there, tell your name and your phone number. Yeah. Right. They go, I, I know my name and I know my phone number. So since I know what to say, it's, it's way easier, oh, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's way easier to do it. So I think knowing what to say is a, 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 a big piece of it too. And, and knowing what the, you know, knowing what your script like, Who do are. I call? What do I say? Who's the target? Hey, and so listen, we can give that to you. Uh, go to freedomplanningcall.com, freedomplanningcall.com and uh, put in a few pieces of information myself or one of our team members, one of us will get on a call and we can literally show you who to call each day because we do it the same way every time and what to say, which I got to tell you, you're, you're spot on. It takes part of the fear away because it's like, hey, I know what I'm going to say and then I'm going to keep moving on. And here's the result I'll get over time. Yeah, you give me you give me a teleprompter to read. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, so now now suddenly doing a video is easy because I'm I'm reading it. I, I don't use a teleprompter, but I'm just saying per sure. se, if I if I have that issue, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like if you have my book, like I do, like when I do my videos, like yeah. I'll get, uh, yeah, we have a thing we call the redneck teleprompter and all it is, is a piece of cardboard. Yeah. Uh, it's like a clipboard and I'll put like three bullet points of what I'm going to say. And then the person holding the camera, she puts that around her neck, you know, with a little bungee cord. And so this clipboard is, you know, hanging just beneath her chin. 
and I got my bullet points there. And so now I know my bullet points, I'm not going to lose my way or what was I going to say, or what was the third thing again? And it's way easier to do my videos when I've got the little, you know, the bullet points that I'm reading. And, uh, and I, I and one last thing I want to cover on this is there's a poison in our industry that's being, uh, man, I, I, I get real passionate about this one. Uh, so this sometimes comes across as uncool and I don't know, I, Maybe it's okay to be uncool sometimes. There's a poison in our industry that is keeping so many loan officers from feeding their families and teaching this vile message of don't beg for business or you're chasing realtors. There yeah. is no such thing. There's no such thing as begging for business. There's no such thing as chasing realtors. I remember, and, I, and I've said this before, uh, Steve, that uh, you know, I was at one of, the, uh, I, one of our events and, and we were talking about this and uh, somebody from the audience said, yeah, but Carl, I, I, I don't want to beg for business. And I said, totally cool. I get it. What does that look like? And he said, you know, you ask for business, they don't send it to you. And then you ask again. I said, brother, where I come from, we call that salesmanship, right? 100%. My average yes comes at 5.7 times. So I ask for the business on an average of 5.7 times before I get the yes. And so if I asked for business, they sent, didn't send it. And then I stopped at that point, I'd have nowhere near the business that I have today. And that, uh, you know, when I, I don't know, uh, there's a little 7-Eleven I go to uh, sometimes in the mornings. And uh, every time I stop in there, the, uh, the young lady behind the counter, I'll get my little bottle of water or whatever. Rich Maria says, you know, you can get that at Walmart for 15 cents and you're paying $1.50 at 7-Eleven, but whatever. But I'll go in there and every single time she'll say, and, and she's not saying it in a weird way or flirtatious way at all. Uh, she'll say, hey, great to see you again. And she knows my name because on the credit card. Hey, great to see you again, Carl. Well, what, will I see you again tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Every time she gives me that call to action, right? And she's not, it's not being yeah, weird or anything like that, yeah, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, That's, yeah, that she's just a, a sales yeah. guy, girl, doesn't matter. But I see you tomorrow. And, and I'm sure she's saying that to everybody, right? And giving me that, that that call to action every single time, every single time, every single time. And so she's not begging me, please, Carl, and getting on our hands and knees, please come to our store tomorrow. Otherwise, you know, we're not going to be able to eat. We're not going to feed it. She's that, 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 you know, on your hands and knees pleading for your life, that's begging. Mm -hmm. Asking for business, asking your friends, hey, can you count on them to send their friends, family, and coworkers? That's not begging. That's salesmanship. And anybody that's trying to lead you away from that is trying to sell you something that you absolutely positively don't need. And so the idea of begging and, and, and chasing business is an absolute farce. Uh, don't fall into that. They're feeding into people's fears and trying to, in a sleazy way, capitalize on it. And that just burns my butt. I'm just telling you right now. So uh, anyway, hey, listen, we'll give you the scripts. Go to freedomplanningcall.com so we can help you with it. Freedomplanningcall.com. Carl, what a great episode, man. Call reluctance, fear of rejection. And maybe I'm getting off on that bunny trail of the begging. It just burns my butt, man. No, I, I think... saw it the other day too. They're, they're misleading people in, in the number one. Poison. They're, no, yeah, it's worse. They're hurting people. They, they're yeah. hurting people that's trying to feed their families. And, and then these people are afraid to pick up the phone. And then they end up getting out of the business. And I think what a freaking crime it is that we have this wonderful career that we're in. And because somebody interjected this crap about you know, rejection and you don't want to be that person. Uh, they're robbing these people of an incredible career and it just burns my, they're, they're keeping, you know, they're keeping from helping their kids pay off their student loans and taking their wife to Paris or, or doing their thing. They're supporting their little league or the, uh, uh, we, we just did a thing, uh, our, our Maria did it. Uh, the uh, lo local school cheerleaders are wanting to go to a, a competition uh, over on the other side of the state. They didn't have the money to go. And so the lovely Mrs. White uh, went down there and stroked him a check because she saw me doing the little league. She said, well, I want to help the cheerleaders too. And I said, well, honey, you better do this one by yourself because I don't think it'd be appropriate for Carl to sponsor the cheerleaders. So why don't, why don't you take care of that one? But helping the people in the community, it's a big deal. And the, and the don't let fear, yeah. don't let false fear of rejection mm. or false fear of call reluctance. It's something that's not true. Don't let the boogeyman in the closet keep you from the life that you deserve the journey that you deserve and the families that deserve your help. Like, don't, don't, don't do that. And it's just, and I tell you one last thing on this uh, is the confidence of the calls happens, not before the calls, but after the calls, confidence only happens after you do something. It never happens before. 
So if you think, well, as soon as I feel confident, then I'm going to make those calls. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. Confidence comes after you do something, not before. Always. That's good. Yeah. I, hey, we can help you with it. Freedomplanningcall.com. We'd love to just help you, man. We got you back. Carl, what a great episode. Love this whole um, just running around the number one problem we see facing loan officers today and what great advice on how to overcome it. So you want help for your and uh, really with that, Carl, great episode. Remember this, everybody. Anything we're doing is worth doing badly. Just get started. See ya.